Did you know that you might be descended from Genghis Khan? A recent study found that around 16 million people carry the genes of the infamous Mongol ruler. But that's not all. Genghis Khan's campaigns cost so many lives that even the world's climate changed. Joe Rogan is also fascinated by this brutal ruler, whose gigantic empire dwarfed even the empires of Alexander the Great and Napoleon. Together with his guests, Rogan uncovers the unspeakable suffering that the first Khagan of the Mongols brought upon the world. But one question still gives historians a huge headache to this day. Where on earth is Genghis Khan's grave hidden? There's a bloody reason why this mystery has still not been solved. Everyone who knew the location of the tomb was cruelly massacred. Born between 1155 and 1167, Genghis Khan achieved something that no other tribal leader had managed before. He united the Mongols under a common banner and conquered an area that goes beyond our imagination. After Kublai Khan had unwaveringly continued the aggressive expansionist policy of his grandfather Genghis Khan, in 1294 the Mongols ruled over an empire that covered around 23.5 million square kilometers. With its gigantic expansion across the whole of Asia and parts of Europe, the Mongol Empire was no less than the second largest empire in world history. Only the British Empire covered an even larger area. However, it is in the nature of things that the inhabitants of the conquered territories did not welcome the Mongolian forces with a kiss. In truth, the road to the second largest empire of all time was paved with thousands and thousands of corpses. But how many lives the Mongol campaigns really cost has not been conclusively determined. According to tradition, Genghis Khan's troops killed 800,000 inhabitants and soldiers during the conquest of Baghdad alone. In the case of the oriental city of Merv, it is said to have been as many as 1.3 million. But compared to the victims that the conquest of China is said to have claimed, even these shocking figures are nothing. 29 million people are said to have lost their lives. And even if some experts believe that the traditional casualty figures are somewhat exaggerated, one thing is beyond question. The gruesome mass deaths were a historic turning point. In an addition to the podcast The Joe Rogan Experience, the eponymous host spoke with Asan Ahmad about the drastic consequences of the unchecked killing. Rogan was quoted as follows. During his lifetime, Genghis Khan killed between 50 and 70 million people. There were so many that the CO2 content of the earth changed. They took samples and found that there was less carbon dioxide in the earth's atmosphere during Genghis Khan's reign. And indeed, a scientific study came to the conclusion that Genghis Khan's campaigns influenced global climate. But how is this even possible? Well, the authors of this study provide a very simple answer to this question. The magic word is reforestation. As the Mongols depopulated entire regions, the vegetation there grew rapidly. The scale of this process was so enormous that it stopped global warming and even cooled the entire planet. The unchecked plant growth simply absorbed more CO2 from the atmosphere and gave the spread of the Mongols an astonishing side effect. The Mongols dined on their dying enemies. However, the countless fatalities not only had a direct impact on the climate and nature, they also left an unforgettable impression on every passing observer. Rogan comments, the Mongols wiped out an entire city in Jin Dynasty China. When the Khorizm Shah sent a delegation to the city, they initially mistook the piled up bones of the dead for the snow-covered peak of a mountain. The wheels of the wagons got caught in piles of corpses on the ground, and when the men finally managed to reach the city, they realized that the supposed mountain was in fact a huge pile of bones. Joe Rogan used the following example to illustrate that the Mongols were also gifted masters of psychological terror. They set people on fire and hurled them onto the roofs of houses with catapults. They also captured high-ranking men such as generals and kings. They tied them up and placed them under a kind of floor. On this floor, they placed tables, at which they ate dinner. And all the while, the people underneath were slowly crushed to death. The victims let out agonizing cries of pain. 
but the Mongols continued to eat in peace. The food eaten by Genghis Khan's troops was no less brutal than the disturbing dinner setting. Joe Rogan stated, Sometimes they even ate each other. When they were about to starve, they would choose one of their number to slaughter and cook. They also drank the milk and blood of their horses. They cut the animal's carotid arteries and mixed the blood that ran out with the milk. According to Rogan, the Mongols were not exactly squeamish when it came to personal hygiene and clothing either. They never changed their clothes. They literally let them rot on their bodies. They also never washed themselves, so they literally stank to high heaven. They usually covered themselves with rotting animal skins, especially the skins of rats, which they sewed together. This is how mercilessly Genghis Khan treated women. In another edition of the Joe Rogan Experience, the host invited Corey Sandhagen to join him. And while the two men talked about the cruelty of Genghis Khan, Rogan also touched on the aforementioned descendant statistics. He wiped out 10% of the world's population back then. And he also raped so many women that countless people still carry his genes today. And this is indeed the explanation that scientists offer for the immense number of descendants. Although according to historical records, the Kagan maintained a harem of around 500 women. Even this number is not enough to explain his immense number of descendants. What seems simply abhorrent and disturbing today was a tried and tested means of demonstrating power around 800 years ago. Accordingly, the 16 million people who carry the Mongol leader's DNA today are the direct result of a perfidious war strategy. This involved systematically abducting and raping the women of the conquered territories. This was often intended to send a humiliating message to the defeated soldiers. True to the motto, look, you can't even protect your women. The aim was to break the few survivors on a psychological level. The following quote shows that this merciless practice was much more than just a means to an end for Genghis Khan. The Khan is reported to have once said, Happiness means destroying your enemies, robbing them of their wealth, and sleeping on the white bellies of their wives and daughters. Where is Genghis Khan's tomb hidden? Many people have a clear idea of how their own funeral should go. Genghis Khan also knew exactly what he wanted to happen after his death. It was his wish to disappear from the earth without a trace and for all time. But before we go into more detail about the enormous burial puzzle, we should briefly consider another question. How did the Mongol ruler die in the first place? Well, according to a widespread assumption, he died on August 18, 1227, when he was on his way back to Mongolia. According to this theory, he suffered serious internal injuries in a riding accident, to which he ultimately succumbed. However, an alternative story says that Genghis Khan was murdered by the Tanguts, more precisely, a Tangut princess. She not only wanted to avenge her people, but also to forestall their rape, which is why she pulled out her hidden knife and emasculated the Kagan. For the Italian researcher Francisco Galassi, however, it was more likely that Genghis Khan died of the plague. Some traditions speak of a high fever that killed the Mongol leader within a week. But regardless of how Genghis Khan may have died in the end, one thing is undisputed. His funeral was probably the bloodiest funeral of all time. After the burial, everyone who had attended the funeral was killed without exception. Allegedly, the Kagan's final resting place was leveled by thousands of horsemen so that it would never be found. The horsemen were executed immediately upon their return so they could not reveal the location of the tomb to anyone. And indeed, the brutal secrecy had the desired effect. To this day, no researcher has succeeded in locating Genghis Khan's tomb. Many experts suspect that the Mongol ruler rests in the Mongolian province of Chentiamag on the southern slope of the Birkin Khaldun. It is said that he once sat down on the slope of the mountain after a hunting trip and said, What of you? Bury me here when I die. He was also born not far from the Birkin Khaldun, and since he once escaped a chase from his enemies here, he regularly prayed for his mountain. However, although the mountain apparently played an important role in Genghis Khan's life, this is just one of many myths and legends surrounding his burial. One of these alternative stories 
says that the burial site is hidden under a diverted river. This is by no means a new idea. The grave of the Sumerian god king Gilgamesh is also said to be hidden in this way in the 3rd millennium BC. When it comes to the lost tomb, many Mongolians still speak of Ikoreg, which means the great taboo. The efforts of archaeologists to track down the burial site have sometimes met with massive resistance from the local population. Until the 1980s, it was even strictly forbidden to carry out excavations in the suspected search area. In 1989, a Japanese Mongolian expedition was granted permission to investigate the region using ultrasound technology. But despite all 1,380 potential burial sites, the earth had to remain untouched. In 2001, historian John Woods and American amateur archaeologist Maury Kravitz finally seemed to have uncovered a hot lead. The team began to uncover a cemetery on a hill near the town of Batsharit, but then the Mongolian Prime Minister put a stop to all further efforts. He justified this with the disrespect of the Americans. They would have driven over the sacred site in their cars and carelessly dumped the mortal remains in simple boxes. A few years later, Albert Yomin Lin from the University of California took a much more reverent approach. Together with 10,000 volunteers, he analyzed numerous high-resolution satellite images and eventually filtered out 55 promising grave sites, but none of them have been archaeologically investigated to date. It remains to be seen if and when Genghis Khan's grave will be rediscovered. Until then, the Mongol leader's death and final resting place will remain nothing more than a captivating myth. Please subscribe now and never miss a new video again.